uh, this series of videos we're going to be uh, going through how to install the EKHFX 360 water cooling kit. We're going to start with the water block because that does seem like a logical place to start. Um, now when you get the water block inside the block itself is a jet plate. Uh, it's likely that that jet plate is not going to be optimized for your specific block, um, processor, so it's good to, uh, to change the jet plate. EK provide two additionals, one for 11.55 and one for 2011. To remove the copper base of the block, you need to use the provided Allen wrench. When you are undoing the screws, you need to be very, very careful not to slip and scratch the block because a scratch on there can ruin the thermal properties. Okay, now when you're ready to remove the base, be very careful with it. Inside the block there, you can see all the copper fins, which is actually where the heat transfer takes place. When you put it down, be very careful not to apply any extra force to it. And that's a removed jet plate. Now, I'm actually going to put the same one back in because I actually already done the jet plate switch. So, this is the real 1155 one and it's going back in. Now, if this O ring here comes loose or this one here, it can cause leaks. So, you need to be very careful with it. If it comes off, I mean, you can reseed it no problem at all. It just can be a bit fiddly. Make sure that you put the block back how it came. It's very important that the way the jet plate is facing is different to the way the fins are because that way you maximize the heat transfer. Reattach your block and then we'll move on. Okay guys, with your jet plate changed over you're going to want to install the back plate. Uh, I have partially installed it already because no one wants to watch me fiddle around. Okay, so if you're using 1155 as we are this is the back plate you're going to want to use. It's very important that this rubber part of the back plate does get installed first so that the metal part is not making direct contact with your motherboard. If you are using anything other than 1155, you are going to want to use this back plate. And if you are using AMD, you are going to want to use this back plate. Correctly line up the back plate with the motherboard mounting screws. And then once you've done that, you need to hold it with your hand and then screw the screws into the back plate from the front of the motherboard. Okay guys, with the back plate installed, you can now install the water block. Basically, you can put it in any orientation you want. Um, know that the middle one is the inlet and then the other one is the outlet. So arrange it to suit how your tubing is going to run. I'm going to have mine like this. I'm aware there is no processor under there at the moment. This is a, an installation guide video. It's not my actual build at this point. So, continuing on. Once your block is seated how you want it, attach a spring to each of the four extended screws coming out of the back plate. And get the little thumb caps. Now, you only want to screw in a very small way. And 
as you progressively go along, you need to tighten each one in turn. So tighten this one a little bit, tighten that one, until they're all locked in place. Applying too much pressure to one is going to lift the block on one side. By doing that, it's going to create air bubbles in your thermal paste, and then the block won't perform as well as it should. Okay then guys, so now we're going to install the radiator in the, uh, in the case. Now I'm lucky enough that my case actually allows me to install the radiator out of it. Um, so imagine we're in a case environment, this really helps me show you how to do it right. I've already attached the fans, I didn't put that in the video because mounting fans is fairly straightforward. Um, when you do it with a radiator, just make sure you don't screw the screws in too far because you can cause damage to the radiator core and if you do that the radiator is useless. Now I'm only doing it in a push configuration because simply it's easier to show you in a video that way. Now if you were in a case you would be supporting the radiator from underneath or have a case in a different angle where it's not going to fall. Um, okay, so go ahead and attach the radiator with screws through the correct fan holes. Make sure you're doing that. Not too far into the radiator again to the core. You get the idea, I'm just going to finish off these last two screws off the video and we'll move on from that. Okay guys, now I'm now going to show you how to mount a reservoir in the case. Um, I've already pre-prepared my reservoir because it would simply take too long on a video to show you and it would be very boring to watch. You choose your inlets and outlets. This is my inlet, this is my outlet. I've left this one open because that's where I'm going to be filling the loop from. Um, I have a spare plug to plug it right here. Once that's all prepped and ready, you need to mount the brackets that are going to hold the reservoir in the case. So, oops, what you want to do is you want to find a good location. I'm going to be using fan mount to do it, just so that I can show you exactly how that's going to work. Now you need one of these bigger screws right here. You put it through the hole in the bracket. You need a washer and a nut too screw through the hole. Don't worry about orientation of the, of the bracket right now. Attach a washer and a nut. Now to do the tightening I have a, a ratchet mount, uh, sorry, a ratchet adapter right here. Once everything is at the angle you want it to be, like so, and then mount the reservoir on the brackets, like that. And then you need to tighten the screws that hold the res in place. So, to do that, you need these screws, which are a little bit smaller than the ones used to mount the bracket itself. There's a hole on the side. And then you have two smaller nuts that you can squeeze into the hole right there. To tighten them, EK provide the correct size Allen wrench. If you screw them in far enough, it will pick up the nut that you have inserted. Once you've done that, attach the reservoir to how you want to mount it. Mine is like this. And then proceed to tighten that screw. It will tighten the arm of the reservoir and prevent it from falling out in the case and leaking water everywhere. I haven't tightened the bottom one again, I'm only showing you for demonstration purposes on the video. It's nice and tight in there, as you can see. You're ready to go. On to the pump. Right, so now we're going to mount our pump. Um, I have already attached the back plate to the pump. Um, 
because it is again just like the reservoir a relatively lengthy process with switching out screws and standoffs and getting everything correct but it is straightforward and does not really require a tutorial once you've done that choose a mounting location in your case you can actually uh, drill the holes yourself or choose a location that has the required required size and holes you are also provided with the correct screws washers and all the things you need to tighten them uh, so again for ease of demonstration we're going to use a fan mount so here's the fan mount I have attached one screw so that it's simpler when explaining so here's the second screw we're going to use it would be ideal if you would use all four um, but that's just not possible the way I'm showing um, but using all four is going to keep vibration down get the screw through the hole grab a washer and stick it over the screw Grab the correct size nut, put that on there for the initial part. Again, like the reservoir, I am using a ratchet adapter, so I'm just going to use that to fit all the way down. Phillips screwdriver, that's all you need for this part. Tighten it up, and you're ready to go. Now, with regards to orientation, power comes out of the bottom, as you can see here. Inlet comes in the top, out the front. I'm powering it by Molex. I'm doing that because it's a lot easier to use an external power supply just to power the pump by itself and get it running. Because um, you don't want really to mount it to the motherboard when you're filling it because if the CPU is installed, blah, 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 you know the deal. Now there are a million and one mounting options for the pump. You can use the sticky mylar. There are many, many different ways. You have some brackets here to attach to the pump. And a whole host of screws and washers right here. You have everything you need to put it anywhere you want. We're now on the tubing part of the tutorial. Um, I have done most of it. In fact, almost all of it. Um, basically, the hardest part about cutting tubing is measuring it. Uh, and not getting kinks, so you can see for the purpose of the video I've used a ton of tubing. That is intentional, um, but ideally you want to try and measure it as best you can so that it looks better. Um, now, you don't want to get kinks. That's what a kink looks like. That's going to restrict the water flow, and, well, it's not going to make it work very well, is it? You also want to make sure that when you fix it over the compression fittings that it is nice and tight over there. Once everything is fitted correctly, you need to then tighten the compression fitting. I'll try and do it at an angle so you can see. And they will grip the tube, so you want to also hold the tube so that the tube doesn't twist. Tighten it literally as far as you can. and you're done. You'll notice that the tubing won't pull out and that's pretty much the effect you're going for. When you cut tubing, if you want to try and get it as straight as possible, um, measure out how long you want. So say for example you wanted a small piece from here to here. Find out how far you want to go and then cut it as straight as you possibly can. And if it is a little ragged on the edges, that's fine, because the compression fitting will cover that. If you're using barbs, which are basically very similar to these without this tightening ring, the best thing you could do is use uh, cable ties to make sure that the tube stays on the barb from the pressure from the cooling loop. Next, we're going to fill it. The next thing is filling the loop. Um, when it comes to filling it, the, it's always best to use a second power supply um, simply because it keeps it out of the case so any active electrical components are not going to get rained on if there is a leak in your system. Um, if you can't, just make sure your motherboard is not wired up because if you power on the CPU before water is able to transfer heat, it's going to hit the thermal maximum, potentially damage your chip, shut off the system, etc. So it won't be very easy. Connect the pump 
to a Molex connector on your external power supply. I have one tucked at the back of the case right here. And then you need to trick the 24 pin into thinking that it's getting a power on signal. I have a plastic coated paper clip here. Um, there are places that actually sell power supply jumpers, which are a little safer. Um, if your power supply is plugged in, do not touch this. Even if it's plastic coated or wrapped in whatever, just don't touch it. It makes it a lot safer for you. When you're wiring up the jumper, you need to connect it to the green wire, which is the power on signal wire, and then any other black wire. I typically use the one just next to the green one. But we are on the final part right now. Basically, we're going to be filling it with distilled water, which is something everybody should have. Normal faucet water is not going to be ideal, simply because it is conductive, uh, meaning that it can carry an electrical current. Not that great. Um, I always use distilled water. It is the best thing to cool with. There are coolants on the market that are great and look very pretty, but distilled water has the best cooling properties to it. So I'm using that. When I've partially filled the loop, uh, the reason for that is for demonstration to keep the videos in a decent time, get water in the reservoir, let the water fill into the pump, use the power supply that we've already hooked up to be powered, and turn it on. You'll see the water drain, and then the pump will start making a sound that it doesn't, doesn't sound very happy. That means there's no water in the pump, and you need to shut the power off. Three, two, one, go. Now you can see that this is filling back up. Basically, the pressure from all the water is coming back through the loop into the pump and pushing it back. Not great, so what you want to do is... Before the pump starts running dry, add more water. Now I'm actually going to fill it into the fill tube a little bit. There we go. And then I am going to power it on again. see the water flowing through the loop. There are air bubbles in there. You want to try and get those out if you can. Once you have everything ready, installed, etc., um, your system should look something like this. Now, I've completely built the system now. It's been running perfectly fine for over 24 hours. Absolutely no leaks, anything like that whatsoever. Uh, you can see that the reservoir isn't bubbling or anything like that, which means that all the air, all the air bubbles are out of the system. Uh, and it's doing very well in terms of cooling too, which you'll be able to see in the test results. We hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you subscribe. Catch you guys later.